I don't know if you remember back, but when Tesla first started talking about using gigacasting in its electric cars, so gigacasts are the part of the car, like the structure, the base of the car, it was roundly panned by the automotive media, by other car companies, and by the commenters. Oh my goodness, you should have seen Inside EVs. It was littered with comments. Tesla's gigacasts are a a joke. They will never work. The automotive industry does it a certain way for a reason. They've always done it that way. Tesla's idea of gigacasting absolutely sucks and it will fail. Variants, variants of that comment were posted all over electric car forums, normal car forums, forums in general. Ironically, since then, BYD and Toyota, for heaven's sake, have both decided, oh yes, along with Geely, actually, it's a good idea. I wonder if any of those commenters will actually retract their statements and say, I'm sorry, I'm not really an engineer. Many of them claim to be engineers. I'm actually just a YouTube or a commenting hero who produces nothing for anyone of any value. They don't. These people produce comments that are negative constantly. They're of no value to anyone. All they do is confuse people. They confuse people and then they're used by websites like Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha reads these comments and goes, Woohoo, wonderful. Let's write an article about that because clearly people think that this is true. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Toyota have just, well, a couple of months ago, they finally decided, let's see what the noise is about. Let's see why Tesla can actually make a profit selling EVs, which is very unusual. Well, it's unique in the industry. Let's see how they're doing it. And they bought a Tesla Model Y. They took it apart. And in their own words, they said it was engineering genius. So this is not the electric Viking saying, hey, buy Tesla stock because I own Tesla stock. I don't. I just sold all of my stock a minute ago because I almost got scammed by stake. Anyhow, new video coming on that insane story where they tried to steal my money <laughs> very soon. In fact, I'm desperately trying to claw my money back out of that company right now. So we'll see how that goes. But anyhow, the point here is to say that if, well, Toyota, the so-called automotive engineering geniuses of the world, there's probably been, what do you think, more than 50,000 articles written on YouTube sorry, more than 50,000 articles written and made about Toyota's engineering genius, how they have the principles of perfection when it comes to engineering. That's People have been saying this for, for years and years. The media has been praising their engineering strategy, saying it's brilliant. And yet Toyota, well, have admitted that actually gigacasting is the best solution to actually make a car. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that this would happen? I honestly think that even Tesla fans didn't think this would happen. But now we've got already BYD, right? It's not just BYD. It's actually half of the Chinese car companies now who are now using some form or some type of gigacasting. It may not necessarily be the same product, but it's basically using the same principles in order to make their cars. I mean, they call it other things like BYD calls it CTB, cell to body. You know, there's all these other different names and terminologies and, you know, structural battery packs are now the thing. Oh, that's funny that, the, you know, that just was that a coincidence that Tesla said, we're going to make structural batteries. And then within what, the space of 24 months, half the industry was saying, oh, structural battery pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never once did they say, oh, yeah, actually, we saw what Tesla said and it was a good idea. That, in my opinion, is what you probably should do. I try to give people credit if they have an idea. I try to give people credit here uh, and I started to say, you know what? I've been reading a website called The Driven. You know what? I've been reading this website here. I've been listening to this. Stanley Munro said this. This so-and-so said this. You got to try and give people some credit, but none of these automakers have, have really done that at all. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Do you? Let me know if you think there's anything wrong with, if someone gives you an idea, um, with just accepting and saying, you know what? That was a good idea. So we're going to do the same thing. I mean, put it this way, right? Within the space of about 12 months of Tesla saying we're doing gigacasting now, eight different Chinese automotive companies had ordered gigacasting machines from the supplier in Italy. Anyhow, a couple of days ago, Toyota said that it will adopt Tesla's technology called gigacasting as part of a strategy by the Japanese automaker to improve the performance and lower the cost of its electric cars. Toyota is not alone in following Tesla's breakthrough. 
So what actually is Giga Casting? The Giga Press is an aluminum die casting machine adopted by Tesla at its factories in the US, China, Germany, and soon to be Mexico. The house, literally house sized machines are able to produce aluminum parts far bigger than anything used before in automotive manufacturing. Elon Musk actually said that he was looking at a toy car. He's looking at a toy car and he thought, hey, why don't we actually use what they're doing to make this toy car? It makes sense. It's kind of a, a weird story, but that's what he says happened. The Giga in the name is a reference to Tesla's convention of calling its plants Giga factories. And other automakers have taken to calling them mega presses, which can refer to smaller but still massive machines. And the other reason they're calling them mega presses is because they don't really want to say, hey, yeah, Tesla had a great idea. We're copying it. Look, everyone, we're copying it. So they're trying to avoid doing that. In operation, the press takes in a shot of molten aluminium of 80 kilos, that's 176 pounds or more, into a mold where it is formed into a part, released, and then quickly cooled. However, I believe Tesla actually have proprietary metals that they use in this. It's not just aluminium, it's some other additives that they put in there to make it work better. Tesla has developed an aluminium alloy that also allows it to skip the heat treating traditionally used to increase the strength of the cast part. So what's the payoff? Typically more than 100 individually stamped metal parts have been welded together to make a car body. That's the way the automotive industry does it. Apparently all these so-called expert pretend internet engineers came out and said, no, 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 it's, a, it's better to do it with a hundred parts. That's why they've done it for the, they've done it way, that way for a hundred years. We should keep doing it that way. I mean, I just mind blown at these, some of these people anyhow. Fewer parts, lower costs, and a simplified production line have contributed to Tesla's industry leading profitability said by, that's actually a comment made by many analysts. So Sandy Munro, he took apart the cars, right? The EVs, and he pointed this out. And he was blasted by so many people. So many people were like, now don't get me wrong, a lot of people said, hey, great, Sandy, thank you for pointing this out. This is really interesting information. But so many people also said, Sandy Munro doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a, I've seen this phrase so many times. He's a bitter old man. And he just wants to criticize other automakers because he loves Tesla. It's such an emotional way to appraise a product or someone actually breaking down. So what Sandy Munro did, he actually literally takes the car apart, shows you piece by piece what's happening. What actually is the process here? And people will respond to that with this kind of reaction, like this emotional reaction. I don't understand it. I think engineering is, is basically science. It's science and mathematics. It's having an emotional reaction to someone actually showing you how a product works and what the advantages are just doesn't make any sense. So that's why I'm still baffled to this day why so many people are so anti, not only anti gigapresses, but also anti, you know, people who are actually doing this for you. It's a free service. He's not charging you. He's not charging you a fee. You don't have to pay $20,000 to watch his video breaking down the car. And the thing is, now we know, well, Sandy and all the other experts, including Tesla, were correct. Fuel parts, lower costs, and simplified production are how Tesla makes a profit on an EV and why no one else does. Well, BYD, what well, they're about breaking even, but yeah, you see my point, right? For Tesla, the use of a single component in the rear of the Model Y, its best-selling model, allowed it to cut related costs by 40%, the company has said. But I believe Tesla actually plans on implementing some more strategies like this like an improved version of this, possibly for the new Model 2, because they're saying they're gonna reduce costs massively, possibly by up to 50%, meaning they need to automate and streamline production processes even more than what they are today. In the Model 3, by using a single piece from the front and rear of the vehicle, Tesla was able to remove 600 robots from the assembly process, 600. That is just mind blowing. It can also cut a vehicle's weight. An important consideration for EVs, where the battery pack alone can weigh more than 700 kilos. That's well over 1,500 pounds. And has a potential to reduce waste and greenhouse gas emissions from a plant. You can clearly see the weight loss in Tesla's cars. Now, a lot of people have said these presses mean nothing. If you have a crash, it's, all it means is the car's a write-off. Now, I don't know anyone driving a Tesla without insurance. So I don't really see the relevance of those comments. If there's a crash 
and your car's written off, your insurance company will buy you a new car. How is that relevant? I don't know. I mean, if you're not going to insure your car, maybe that's a consideration that you need to, you know, think, okay, if I'm in a new crash, if I cause an accident, my car could have a write-off. But my recommendation to everyone is when it comes to cars, get insurance. Therefore, that's not really that relevant, right? But the weight loss is relevant. The reason, for example, the Tesla Model Y was able to get 450 kilometers of range using a BYD, basically a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in the recent test in Norway because of its weight. Now, the equivalent BYD Addo 3, which is a much, much smaller car, uh, got way less range than that. It got 380 kilometers, so 70 kilometers less range using the exact same battery size, exact same battery chemistry. I believe the exact same battery 70 kilometers less in a much smaller car. You can see here, the efficiency is key here to Tesla being able to make a car that can get this range with a smaller battery pack. Weight does matter in an electric car. For example, most competitors to the Model Y that are a similar size are 300 kilos heavier, about 650 pounds. That's a big difference. Toyota says that the advantages of a Gigapress are significant. They said they expect that using die casting aluminum will eliminate dozens of sheet metal parts from assembly and reduce waste and therefore reduce cost. Who makes these machines? Tesla sources its presses from Italy-based IDRA or IDRA, which has been a unit of China's LK Industries since 2008. So even though everyone thought this was an Italian company, it's actually owned by Chinese parent group. Competitors of IDRA and LK include Beulah Group in Europe, Yube and Shibora Machine in Japan, and Yuzumi and Haishen in China. The global aluminum die casting market was worth 73 billion last year and is projected to increase to nearly 130 billion by 2032. But I think that's probably uh, completely wrong. I think we're going to see more and more manufacturers accept the fact that unless they do it this way, they just can't profit from EVs. They need to utilize gigapresses to some degree. In addition to Toyota, General Motors, Hyundai, and affiliates of China's Geely, Volvo cars, Polestar, and Zika are using the technology or planning to do so. But they're just some of the companies that you've heard of. There's others as well. Zika has started using massive aluminum die casts for a multi-purpose van it makes for sale in China and said it will introduce the technology for other models. Volvo said last year it would invest more than 900 million to upgrade its plant near Gothenburg, Sweden to include Megapress technology. So what's the deal? What's the catch? Well, cost. Everything matters when you're trying to make profits selling electric cars. Ford has admitted over the last what 12 months, they've lost around $20,000 on every EV they've sold. That's the average. That's not speculation. That's Ford's disclosure. Tesla records most of its sales with just two models, the Model 3 and the Model Y. High sales volume on just two platforms makes it easier to justify the investment in new production technology. Other EV startups also have that advantage. For legacy automakers, with more complicated product lineups and factory machinery that is already amortized, the decision to invest many millions of dollars in new casting technology, new processes, retraining staff, basically changing your, changing your entire production line is a harder call. It's harder to say, well, let's ignore sunk cost bias. We've invested many hundreds of millions of dollars into, or probably billions of dollars into doing it this way. Let's change to a completely new way. Very difficult to do. Toyota has said, you know what? Whilst all that is true, we have invested billions is still worth doing. Therefore, the advantages must be massive. Cars with body sections cast into single pieces could also be harder or more expensive to repair after an accident. And that could add to the cost of operation for EVs in the long run, for example, in affecting your insurance premiums. However, they're also much safer. Cars made with a giga casting are structurally more rigid, therefore in a crash, more likely to hold their structure. And you can see an example of just how well Tesla's vehicles hold up in crashes. When that Model Y was driven off a cliff, the, the car fell, what was it, like 200 feet to the ground below, had children in the back, 
everyone walked away okay well they didn't walk away actually they were carried away in an ambulance but everyone was okay and any other car other numerous other cars have gone off that cliff everyone has died it's the first time anyone's gone off that cliff and actually survive the fall. I think that's a pretty good example of how gigacasting and how building a car in this structurally rigid way can give you an advantage that may end up saving your life. Now, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think about Toyota deciding, yes, yes, okay, Tesla was right. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.